and it's good to have you here. This is the April 20th uh, Asia Pacific Chaos Community Call, and we have a few things on the agenda today. I think uh, one is we'd really like to talk about a, a metric model. So I think that's, is that correct? I think that's the hope today. So I have a few housekeeping things that I just like to talk about before we get to that. Uh, and so, um, first of all, metrics release, it happened. So congratulations to everybody. Uh, here's a link to the to the uh, Chinese translated version, the PDF right there. Yeah. So thank you everybody, of course, for the huge amount of effort that goes into this. Uh, this is great. And I, I'd like to say, you know, thanks to uh, obviously everybody on this call. Um, and I'm not sure if there are people who are not on this call who, who I'd also like to say thank you to too um, for translation. So and I, you know, if there are things that that need to, to change in the future or things that that we can do better, um, just, you know, let us know if, if the process could be improved in any way. We'd like to, to kind of capture that process improvement. Uh, I, I do think that, for, at least from my perspective, the process is going quite well. And I think we're continuing to push the process forward with our Spanish translations as well. So I think there's good progress there, and I think the hope is for this next round we can start making some progress with Spanish translations. Exactly, I hope so. That'll be great. We can close those <laughs> issues too. The whole long list of issues can finally be closed. <laughs> the the mostly the biggest issue because I think process has been sorted out is finding the people who can help do the translations. You know, the human resources is always the most complicated part. So. So thank you for everybody on that. That's just great. Um, I did want to say just a comment on the next release cycle for this. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is for the next release cycle, we're going to be focusing on updating released metrics. And so while there might be a few new metrics, really the hope is, is that we can focus on updating metrics that were released sometimes up to two or three years ago, um, just because things have changed. Sometimes the template has changed. Sometimes just our thinking has changed. Some of the old metrics, I think Elizabeth, you had pointed out, even have like old SQL statements in them. Like we don't need that. I I kind of familiar this uh, with this stage because uh, we already call it. Uh, we have to every three years we have to use one release to clean up some technical mm -hmm. debate. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. So we really have to focus on cleaning up that technical bed. So that's mm -hmm. your, your spot on, Yahui. Mm -hmm. um, so I just I did want to just kind of point out a few things in here, and it might just be something for you to think about. So um, right now we have, if I, the first link is, it's the, the issue template that we use for revisiting a metric. All right, so we provide the name of the metric being revised and a link to the metric on the web page, like as under its current release. We point to the original issue under which the metric was developed. So this is revising a metric will create new issues. Mm -hmm. And then we provide any details of things that need to be updated. So for example, like, um, sometimes list formats are incorrect, or sometimes an objective section is not clear. Like the the reviewer just kind of provides a list of things that they see that probably, or the template is old, or you have SQL statements that need to be removed. You know, you just provide a list of things. There. Yeah. And then we do provide a whole checklist of of things to do. Just it's kind of like part of the release process. Just making sure that. Everything. It's a really great template. We can follow up this process to clean up the, yeah. the, the, the things. Yeah. yeah, so I was wondering, like we have, like I have a really rudimentary update translations template. Yeah, that started. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing in there. So it might yeah. be like, I would like you to think about what would be a useful issue for you. Mm -hmm when there needs to be an update and okay so if you could take a look at that that issue template that i've started right here that would be useful and it's just it's mostly for you whatever is useful for you <laughs> when it when a new issue comes in 
So we're really trying to clean up kind of the process by which we do work in GitHub. And I think issue templates and PR templates are going to be, start showing up a little bit more consistently. So mm -hmm. cool. Nothing to do today. It doesn't have to imagine or it doesn't have to happen um, right away. OK, so just a question for folks. All right. Um, let's see. Next issue before we get to the metric model. Um, I think, June, you have a question about how we can set up Augur instances, you know, like some um, community dot Augur dot. Yep. Yeah, I mean. yeah. Um, let, uh, could I share my screen first? Yeah, of course. Let me, I'll make okay. you co-host. Uh, no. uh, June, no. do you remember you asked a question to, uh, uh, to Shane that uh, uh, you, you would like to have a similar uh, Augur instance like eBay. Yes. So here, uh, yeah. the might response to your question. Yeah. That's that's what I'm talking about here. And I, we, yeah. the answer is yes, we can do that. Sean is. Oh, oh like oh, like this. Oh, I I, I tr oh, I just want to add uh, add other project in Augur. Um, I just uh, want to know how how to do it. So, so right maybe yes. So yeah. the June I. The answer is yes, it can be done. Right now, it's a bit of a manual process. So you just have to coordinate with Sean as to what the repository or, rep or organization is that you would like okay. to point Augur to. He's traveling right now. He's in Europe. So it's a, that's why it's a little uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I yeah. So we, we've we set these up for uh, folks at Red Hat. We, I think we've set them up for folks at VMware. I think we've set them up for obviously eBay. So it's it's something that we can do, June. So if you have okay. a if you have a list of um, like repositories that you would like to analyze, that would be a good first start. Okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe uh, will he come back? And uh, yeah, and we can set it up. I don't know if this is for Huawei, but like it could be like Huawei.auger.io. And then under that, you would have a list of repositories that you care about at Huawei. So if it might be a good idea to start setting up or just thinking about what those repositories are. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah. And then I, I know that he once he sets up an instance, I think it takes a few days to actually, it depends on how big the repositories are, but it can take a few days to actually collect all of the data, just because sometimes it's, there's a lot. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Um, let's see, one, I'll share my screen one last time here. Um, I did want you to know that just... I think folks here on this call would be interested. So Google Summer of Code, the application period is done. It ended yesterday. Yep. I think we have 14 applications. That's huge numbers. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. And so a number of them. Um, so we had two projects, one, but one was focused on kind of implementing the conversion rate metric model. Mm -hmm. And there were a number mm -hmm. of submissions towards that. Yeah, uh, actually, I have uh, some some students have uh, contacted with me to ask the questions related to one uh, project about the conversion rate, mm -hmm. and I found they are very active on on this project, mm -hmm. and ask the questions, give them the proposals of the solutions. I think I think I, I they would do their work very well. The people, the students from India, from China, and okay. from from USA. Yep. Okay, yeah, I, we can actually take a look. Um, if I come back here. By the way, this picture is from Elizabeth. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> wow. What is it? It is, uh, it's called a, uh, I forget the name of it. It's a spider that makes like this basket of web and then uh -huh. it, like entraps. So that's just dew drops from the morning sun hitting them. In this oh, like basket so of beautiful. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Use your cell phone camera or or some professional camera. I have a Canon. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. I, okay. I do I do that on the side. So I like make prints and sell them and things like that on the side. So for fun. Very good. So here are the these are the individuals who've expressed interest, not gay or no, that's just not case. gay. Uh I yeah, Sunday hi. I how to pronounce yeah. Um okay. this lady. Okay. And um yeah, Mabel. It's the Mabel or Mabel? Mabel. Mabel. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and the Tai Wei Wu. Okay. okay. These three guys. Uh, in in the, in the past three four weeks, they always come to to me through the Slack, and we okay. uh, discuss the this topic, okay. uh, this project together. So the way that sounds good. So the way that it'll work, Yehui, is um Google Summer. Are you familiar with Google Summer of Code? Just the process. So basically, we can, we will take a look at the proposals and we'll meet as a group of mentors, you know what I mean, and folks who have been involved in the process. Mm -hmm. And it's possible, even for, say, the conversion rate project, we can request more than one student. So we can okay. request, I think one year we had nine students participating in the chaos project. So if we believe that a proposal is solid and will improve the, you know, improve conversion rate or improve our work around conversion rate, it's quite possible for us to make a request for, say, three students to work on that project. Yeah, so, that's great. So the way that we'll do it is we'll work, we'll meet as a group of mentors, and then we put in the number of requests for students to Google, and then they approve or they adjust down the number mm -hmm. of request. So if we put in a request for seven, they might say, sure, you're approved for seven. Or if mm -hmm. we put in a request for seven, they might say you're approved for five. And then, then we figure it out from there. Okay. And then the only other thing is as we make decisions, we won't do it here, but as we make decisions, um, don't, you're not supposed to tell the students because Google likes to release that all at one time. Mm -hmm. So if, if we choose one of these students, you know, as a possible participant, don't tell the student that we've chosen them. We we simply okay. inform Google, and then Google tells the students they okay. like it. <laughs> that's a process. Right? Yeah, that's the process. <laughs> well, yeah, I, they like I understand. It, but all organized, so just that's all too. Okay, mm. cool. Uh, great. So we'll set up a meeting, Yihui. Um, I don't know, probably in the next couple of weeks. Just we'll we'll share out the proposals kind of in a formatted way, and then we'll just set up a meeting and we can talk a private meeting where we can talk through the proposals and make decisions. Okay. All right. Cool. Great. Thank you. Uh, all right. So now we are to the metric model. So <laughs> metric model. <laughs> forward. So thank you very much for uh, kind of going through those processes, and uh, I will stop my share. And June, did you want to share your screen? Was that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so you should be able to do that. So, yep. Yeah, this is my screen. Can yep. you see our my screen? Yep. Yep. yep, we can see that. So I just want to show our metric model steps forward. And uh, <clears throat> this this guy is a uh, uh, Nobel um uh, no no uh sorry wait a minute <clears throat> this guy is a uh, a uh, Nobel laundry so he said um a wealth of information creates a pro priority of attention and it means uh, in our chaos metric we have a lot of information a lot of uh, metric, maybe we have to um, use metric module to focus our attention. So, um, and so in this, and in this PT, and I want to show um, the data inside make, make us focus on the most uh, meaningful data. And this is, there are five pictures and it means there are five steps. So um, there are five steps to, to processing our information. And um, in 
our chaos metric and the most of the metric we are uh, um, step uh, metric step one like this like this so we just uh, um, and extract uh, our original debt to the simple uh, information like uh, our independent metric such as uh, um, we defined we defined uh, and change pr to one metric it means our um, multiple independent metric so um, and now we connect this information to knowledge so uh, now we are step step two metric step two like our conversation rates we defined um, we defined some simple rule and uh, connect uh, simple sim uh, uh, simple information. So, uh, so we we now we are step 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 two metric step two, and uh, also metric module step one like this this picture. So, um, so we are trying to move to the next uh, two step. Um, we are trying to define the room and uh, convergency our knowledge and uh, in order to find our insight like this step now the next step we could discover and uh, maybe we could uh, pre-stack um pre prediction 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 predicting some some information and um, i give some example simple example so we can say and um, more clearly and the original data like auger and the grim lab and they trying to use original um, github api to get the original data like this we, we are all familiar with this this is like this is one PR URL like this. This is the original date. And uh, this picture from Augur. And we have metric step step one and we define some like issue. So we can um we can simply say the how this issue um per uh, in this. So this is uh, uh, step two and we could we could say simple translation and we can say um people how to translation and what what is the rate of the trans translation um so this the metric model step two we are trying to find the in, inside inside point like uh, Ye Hui provided the uh, last meeting and uh, he gave us some example of uh, how to find the insight um, in active metric modules. And the, the last step, um, we're trying to use, to use uh, another module, maybe ARM AR module and SVM module, and we could find out, uh, uh, we could uh, find out and uh, maybe pre pre prediction, and who will, uh, who will live from this uh, community. So, um, like like uh, uh, I said before. So um, this is, uh, uh, this cycle, it means we are in match module step one, and we only have uh, module def definition. And um, like uh, we defined uh, some user case and we defined the uh, match model rooms and uh, uh, some other, some other metric. This is our, uh, this is, uh, this one we already, we already achieved. So, 
and uh, the thing and uh, the part of uh, realizations. But the other things we still uh, lack. We still lack of the other things like metric module step two, and the way. <clears throat> And the uh, dead inside and original dead waste, we are not, we are, we not have this. We are not have this three part. So Chen Qi provided the pull request in this link and she uh, submitted three parts in three floors. Like that insight, that's that. This. So we hope to achieve the follow goals. Mm, mm, in order to raise hospitals and community managers' ex, 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 expectations on the value created by a metric model, so we introduce a real world community data set. And we are trying to uh, a set of uh, chaos in the future and uh, with real community data. And we are trying to um, give chaos our uh, open unit or open goals, goals, open goals data. So, this is all my part. Is it clear? Yeah, actually, uh, after last uh, uh, metrics model meeting, we have a long discussion with the community manager from, uh, you know, uh, from uh, from my my company who originally in, in, initialized some communities like uh, Open Ruler. Open goals, uh, and those two community managers also think that they would like to contribute their uh, community data site to chaos, and we can use their data site to verify our metrics model. So in, with this, we can verify our metrics model to say, okay, this metrics model has has been verified by some data site. You know, uh, so we can prove that it. Uh, it's can it's can uh, produce some values, and uh, we would like to introduce more data site. Uh, if other communities would like to contribute their data site to to our chaos, I think it such data site would become a uh, valuable asset of chaos in the future, because what we like like of in chaos is that we have a lot of metrics and metrics models. It's it's very it's very nice, but the, the next thing is we have to prove that this matrix model worked for for the real uh, case. So what we lack of is the data site in the real world. So we want uh, to recommend more communities to contribute their data site to our community. And we can utilize those data site to verify our metrics and matrix model. So the next uh, demo would come from uh, Chen Qi, he will to uh, to using this pull request to demo how to how to ex explain the whole process. Maybe Chen Qi, you can share your screen. Let me make. Um, I will share my screen. I will make you co-host so you can share your screen. Okay, you should be able yeah. to now. Okay. Um, could you see my screen? Yes, yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, I will continue to introduce the metric model. Um, Yehui has introduced the uh, metric model in metric model working group, and uh, Jin has uh, given the whole solution on slides. And I will show you uh, how to uh, calculate the uh, community activity metric model in Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we design um, it together, um, and uh, the first of all, I will uh, introduce the file structure. 
Mm, uh, there are three floaters as uh, Jin has introduced uh, just now. Uh, the first uh, is data insight uh, as, I'm, we are, uh, as I'm showing. Mm, it is a Jupyter notebook. Uh, we can see all the charts by running the cell. And then the second is the algorithm. Um, uh, it, um, the detail of every metric model algorithm is in it. And the contributors could add their uh, algorithms for different uh, metric in this file. And uh, the last folder is uh, data set. Uh, it is about uh, uh, open ruler git and uh, issue data. Uh, we can fetch, we can fetch uh, our, mm, uh, we can fetch uh, those data by Augur or Grimory Lab. And uh, we abstract uh, metric model and the metric model data from uh, these two origin data uh, to, and uh, into the rest uh, uh, JSON file. Mm. Uh, the following codes um, are designed to load the data set and the draw diagram. Mm, uh, the, uh, from line eight to line nine, um, they are uh, loading metric, uh, metric model data um, in order to mark uh, two communities. Uh, I set a key named the community. And uh, uh, it uh, is designed to distinguish uh, these two com community. And uh, from line 20 to 27, it is designed to draw a column diagram. And uh, uh, this is the basic information of these two community. Mm, and uh, we will see a uh, metric model inside. Mm. Uh, the detail of the algorithm is in the uh, community activity score there dot Python file. Mm, we will mm, <clears throat> we will use the algorithm in this file to calculate uh, different metric model score. And we will uh, calculate the score every week. So I use a loop to calculate uh, activity score um, <clears throat> by this line. And then uh, I added the metric model data to the data frame to show the community activity score. And uh, this is the, sorry, and this is the result of this line. Mm, by, this, mm, by this feature, um, we could see the community A score is very stable uh, with an obvious pattern together with the version release date. Uh, and the, the virtual lines means the version, mm, means the version release date. And the green means uh, community A uh, release this, and the orange means uh, open ruler release this. Mm, and uh, as uh, open ruler is uh, a young community, so its value grows uh, fast at the beginning, and even exists community A at some point. And uh, but there is no obvious pattern. Mm, metric model above has shown the compare, comparison about two community, and it also can show the detail of any single community. Mm, in this cell, I add open ruler data to the data frame, and it will show the detail of open rulers data. Open rulers data. Mm, in order to go deep inside, we would uh, 
Mm, we need to check the result of each metric. The first is the contribution count. The contribution count, and it means how many activity can authors or participants in the last 90 days. And uh, we, <clears throat> we use contributor count to be the y axis, and uh, we will get the feature below. Mm, by this uh, figure, um, we can see the number of uh, contributors in community A is very stable, and the open ruler uh, shows a surge, and it means it successfully attracts a lot of new contributors. Mm. And the, the second metric is the commit frequency. And it means the average number of commits per week in last 90 weeks, <laughs> last 90 days. Um, and by this figure, um, by this feature, the result of community frequency shows higher relevancy with the contributor count. Uh, if we look closely to the figure, we could find that value views of community A has the same frequency with the overall activity score. Um, we could see there is a uh, wave crest and the graph between the release dates and uh, it has the similar pattern in critical score. Uh, and the third is update things metric. Uh, it means the average time per repo since the repo was the last update. Mm. Uh, by this figure, we could see uh, community A uh, shows a obvious triangle wave pattern. Um, combined with open ruler, uh, uh, combined with figure community activity, uh, we could find that uh, uh, almost uh, all the repo has been maintained before each version was released, but uh, open ruler doesn't show this capability capability. Uh, and also we, we list some suggestions because we do some data insight for this figure uh, by ourselves. Uh, if there are more uh, suggestions, I mean the data insight here, we can add, add more data insight or analysis here in the future. Yes. Okay. Mm, and the <clears throat> next is the comment, comment frequency. It means the average number of comments per issue in the last 90 days. Yeah, I, I think the rest of us the, the, is the similar with the bow, uh, uh, the similar as the, the bow metric inside, right? 20. Mm, yes. Mm, and I have. Mm, submit a pull request, and we can also have some discussion in that pull request. Yeah, yeah, I, I have a, a number. So first of all, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. Okay. I have a, a number of, of kind of comments and questions that I, I think I understand. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe June, you can come back to your slides. We can discuss up uh, based yeah, on yeah. that size, maybe that'd be perfect, and then we can go to okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is yeah, this is good. This this can um. So first of all, I love the the structure that you're that you're showing here, and I agree with you that we are kind of in that metric definition step one, 
and now we're kind of thinking about how to bring those together in a metrics model. Um, and then based on Yehoi, what you had shown last time with the insights, the insights paragraphs, is is there a suggestion that that we in the metrics models would actually do metric model step one and step two concurrently? Would we do them at the same time? Because there, there could be an argument that we don't do insights first. You know what I mean? We, we first do metrics model step one, get that organized and then do metrics model step two or the other is that we do step one and step two concurrently i, I i'm not in favor of either mm -hmm. um i'm just i'm opening this for discussion yeah but because the reason that uh, the most case we only do things in the step one is that we we lack of the real data so we cannot verify that okay so that's why we uh I we give us our proposal or solutions. We would like to introduce more real world community data side from the real communities. So that's why we first talk to our community managers, Open Aurora and uh, Open Goss, and many other community managers. They would like to contribute their uh, data size to our chaos community. That that's the I mean the uh, advantage. Uh, condition so okay. if we have such data site then we could provide uh, the the uh, the requirement of the verification data for to step into the step two of course okay. that we cannot uh, force all the metrics model have to finish all the steps before they gonna go uh, release or, okay. or submit but uh, but if we could solve that problem I think it's very uh, useful for the people who have okay. just have an idea of the metrics model, but they don't have the enough data to verify okay. their metrics model. Okay, so there would be an, an opportunity for a metrics model to not necessarily do step two because they don't have the data. But mm -hmm. if, if the data is available, then it's suggested that insights be provided against that data. Is that correct? I agree yeah. with you. Okay. And and also the, another point is that, uh, especially in China, not just the, the commu com community managers from my company, but also from many other companies like Tencent, like Ali, they told us that uh, they, uh, in the first couple of years, they come to chaos. They found that in chaos community, they provide a lot of metrics. They are very happy about it. They would like to use one of them, but finally they got they cannot continue to to handle that in their communities because 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 before they start using that, there's no result of verification process to tell us to tell them okay does it work does it really work gotcha so, okay no that makes sense and I'm I'm completely happy with that I just wanted to get my to just understand kind mm -hmm. of the, the context so that yeah. all makes good sense yeah so. So right now we have stepped into some kind of stage of the metrics model. I think we are we are going to release metrics model in 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 the following two or three months later, or yeah. or yeah. even one month later. But before I do that, I would like to to tell those community managers, hey, come on, we have to prove that uh, this metrics model has been verified okay. using some real data. Okay, no, that makes that makes sense. I, I think maybe a lot of my questions are, um, they're certainly not concerns. I'm just, I always have to think about like kind of the, the related process components that go with it, just as we do the releases of metrics models and include insights and available data uh, to, to kind of verify those insights. I think it's wonderful. I'm just always kind of thinking about the process by which we go about doing this. And it, it's a problem that certainly can be solved. So this is wonderful. And I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, so if we agree with uh, to um, provide, the, pro provide the real community data set, do we have some official statement data set uh, uh, donation or some other? No, that was actually a question I had. Is, is, like, do we have some official like announcement? Announcement yeah. or? A last, yeah, announcement or some um, like. No, we don't. And these are the kind of things I'm thinking about. Like, how do we, like, how do we, 
this is the process stuff I'm thinking about, just from a community perspective, not. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, if we could, uh, uh, how to how to, uh, I mean, to convince those communities to to contribute their own data side to our chaos. So we we are think of some ideas. So for some communities, they would like to you know pro promote their communities to say, okay, uh, you can verif you can help me verify our communities. I'm confident to say that my com my community is is healthy in in some perspective. Okay, that's why they would like to contribute their own data set. And in some other point, if we could set provide some reference links in our chaos to say, okay, we have uh, uh, adopt or accept data site contributed by some communities. That also some ways to help them to say, okay, we have set up some connections with other communities to like some kind of collaborations. Yep, I agree. Um, do we, okay, so um, this is helpful. Um, if, if I look at the, the red text, this is obviously a, a structural change or a structural a proposed structure change to kind of what we have in the metric model repository, which is, which is great. Um, so, I mean, there's kind of two, there's, there are two things that are being proposed here. One is a bit of a process, which we have to think about. And the other is the structural change, which I don't see any problem with <laughs> just the kind of the, the proposed change here. Right now, the structure change doesn't necessarily follow the way that we distribute um, notebooks. Um, so I, I think we probably want to think about that as well. If you if you actually go to the metrics model uh, repository right now, we have a folder I think called implementations, and then under implementations is a Jupyter notebook called Community Welcomingness which Sean and uh, Ragava have been working on. So you can see that's a slightly different design than what you have here. And we just need to make sure that these are in the same. And I had commented on the pull request about that, about that structural change as well. So we just need to be consistent as to how we contribute notebooks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then- I have a comment. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Shoya. Yeah. Uh, hi, it's a long time. Um, from my understanding, so um, there would be um, like um, especially Huawei, uh, some communities on, under like Open Aura or Open Gauss is interested to donate its internal data, maybe without those sensitive information, um, to chaos and um, also encourage other communities to donate their data and uh, provide a way to verify if these metrics are um, useful or or indicates or already means something. Um, so that may require some data standard. Like uh, from my understanding, it uh, needs to construct and maintain um, a data set, like data set, a set pool, mm -hmm. and yep. especially some data related communication. Maybe, uh, I mean, data re related Git is maybe the same, but other kind of data may have different forms. Uh, in that way, we could define the data schema for the different yes. metrics model, and we can follow in that data schema to continue provide the, the, the long long term data from those communities. And uh, the thing, the data we provide, uh, not just from data. I talked to one communities like Open Gauss, who is uh, uh, that is uh, uh, database community. Uh, in this community, they would like to contribute some. Uh, database servers instance together with uh, open ruler to to chaos to store those data if we don't have enough infrastructure infrastructures in, in our communities 
Yes, we could uh, provide some try, try me, try me playground. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I think this is a good step for chaos metrics to really lend to some to somewhere like to be in, uh, instant to have an instance to be uh, I don't because I as Ye Hui said I also heard some community managers they said they don't know how to deal with these metrics mm -hmm. be, because so, most of them they are not from like uh, they are not that data scientists they are just um, uh, manager <laughs> management yeah. role yes and they don't know how to handle these metrics like how to collect data yes yes so i i know that in this short meeting we cannot make make any final decisions but uh matt would you think that we can continue such proposal discussions in some other meetings with other people together yeah, to yeah. see yeah so i'm wondering i mean it, it would probably be worth obviously we should talk about this next week in the metrics model meeting <laughs> that, that goes okay, without sure. that's true that, that's true um yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking we should probably talk about this in the community meeting as well. So yeah. there are, we do have an opportunity to talk about and kind of bring these things forward to the community. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I, um, so I think those would be the two places I would start. We have the community meeting next Tuesday, and then we have also the, the metrics model meeting next Tuesday or Wednesday morning for all of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so would that work for you? Yeah, I think so. Do you think I need to attend this community meeting together? Oh, I think I can. I, I think I understand. <laughs> no, you do not need to attend that meeting. That's a. I think that's a very difficult time for you. Um, so I can. I can certainly cover you there. I, I've kind of made a few notes in the the minutes for today because the way I see this is is there are some process components that I have. I think we have to think about, which are things like how do we. Um, reach out to a community and request data sets like why how do we even make that request okay. how do we um, announce to the community that we have available data sets like there's just some kind of community related things that i think we should certainly cover here yeah the um, basic information that mm -hmm. we would like to contribute to our data site it's a mm -hmm. at some sample and also we would like to uh, donate some infrastructure so if we don't have in, enough yeah. resources in current time. Yeah, and, and I think uh, that would be well-received infrastructure. Yeah. So the final goal mm -hmm. is that we would like to fund a future of chaos that in this community, we have a site, some kind of, we call it a site, that we have real community data to help you to verify more things yep. I mean, not, not just metrics and metrics models. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that, that's absolutely amazing. Um, and then to Shoya's point and Yehui, what you were also talking about, like, is there a, a metadata that we need to ask for against the data sets or is there a, a data schema that we need to ask? Like, is there a standard way that we do contributions? Like, yeah. these are just things we have to think about, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I understand. Yeah. I think solve. eventually, eventually this may, may be uh, also like the, uh, become an alliance, like what open chain does like yep, I know what you're an about. alliance of yeah of companies who donate their data and and form a standard yeah uh, I think more companies or um I, I mean the organizations we could call say that uh, would like to join chaos to set up such connections uh, I think that that's kind of opportunities for our communities yeah i agree and i think we're at the point now where as we put forward metrics models and ways to actually do visualizations and provide insights this is where to your point shoya like the non-data scientists can start to look at some of this information <laughs> in, in ways that are meaningful to them i think we're finally at this point it takes a long time to get here but i think we're finally getting there so i miss you shoya <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so I okay. devastated. I'm still locked in my dump tree for over 10 days. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that, Shoya. Yeah, so, I hope this could come to an end. It will come to an end. 
at where. Um, so everybody, all I can say is a huge thank you. This was an amazing presentation. I think you gave me a lot to think about while I walk my dog or <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, 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 many things to think about, um, all, all in a very good way. That's what I, I mean, in a very positive way to think about, because these are, I think, are very positive steps forward. Um, so I really appreciate you taking the time to think about these and you taking the time to present them and your presentations were amazing. Um, and now how can we collectively do this as a, as a community? Absolutely wonderful. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, so we're at the end of our time. Um, uh, I will bring this up in the community call next week, and then we will see most of you if that would work for you on the metrics model meeting. Exactly. Next see you next week. Okay. Take care. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.